After years of battling her mental health, Sinead O'Connor passed away at the age of 56, according to her devastated family. The unidentified Irish Grammy-winning singer rose to fame in 1990 with her moving rendition of Prince's Nothing Compares to You. Her cause of death is unknown. It occurs 18 months after the 17-year-old son of the mother of four who committed suicide by escaping from the hospital while on suicide watch in January 2022. The performer, whose name was changed to Shuhada Sadakat in 2018 when she embraced Islam, was supposed to divide her time between London and Koroskaman, Ireland, at the time of her death. O'Connor uploaded a picture of Shane and wrote, Been living as an undead night creature since. In her most recent tweet, he was my true love and the light of my soul. We were two parts of one soul. The only person who has ever shown me absolute affection is him. Without him, I am lost in the bardo. The mother of four also shared a number of Spotify links to depressing tunes, one of which she dedicated to all mothers of suicidal children. Over the years, O'Connor has talked openly about her difficulties with mental health. She acknowledged that she had bipolar illness and that she had struggled with suicidal thoughts. She postponed a tour in 2012 due to a very serious breakdown, and in 2015 she disclosed that she had overdosed at an Irish hotel. The singer's family released a statement on Wednesday in which they said, It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved Sinead. In this extremely trying time, her family and friends have asked for privacy as they are saddened. Following the news of the beloved singer's passing on Wednesday night, tributes poured in. O'Connor's extraordinarily beautiful, unique voice was commended by Irish President Michael D. Higgins, who also expressed his hope that her spirit may find the peace she sought in so many different ways. May I extend my sincere sympathies to Sinead O'Connor's father John, her family, and everyone else she spent her life with. He added, when I initially learned of Sinead's passing, my first thought was of her really lovely and distinctive voice. Her devotion to the delivery of the song and its meaning was complete, and this was evident in all of the recordings she did as well as in all of her appearances. What Ireland has lost at such a relatively young age is one of our greatest and most gifted composers, songwriters, and performers of recent decades, one who had a unique talent and extraordinary connection with her audience, Al, said one of us who had the privilege of knowing her. One couldn't help but be struck by the depth of her fearless commitment to the important issues which she brought to public attention, no matter how uncomfortable those truths may have been. Her ability to shift across several artistic mediums and the way her voice travelled and was welcomed around the world were both exceptional achievements. She produced a body of work for movies via the creation of flawlessly chosen and highly praised lyrics. Among other things, Sinead O'Connor's voice and delivery were so unique and exceptional in so many different ways that they gave the listener the strong sensation that she accomplished so much while bearing such a heavy weight. Her contribution joins that of other great Irish women who made indelibly at individual contributions to our culture, history, 
and way of life, may her soul discover the tranquility she looked for in so many different ways. Really sad to learn of the loss of Sinead O'Connor, Irish Taoiseach Cleova Adkar stated, her skill was unparalleled and unsurpassed, and her music was adored all around the world. We send our condolences to her family, friends, and the many music fans. At the right hand of God rest her soul slash rest in peace, the verse begins. Michael Martin, a Tornishter, expressed his devastation after learning of O'Connor's demise. One of our greatest musical icons who is dearly cherished by the people of Ireland and abroad, he continued, Our thoughts are with her kids, family, friends, and everyone else who knew and loved her. Deeply grieved to learn of Sinead O'Connor's demise, the Irish Embassy in America stated. A fantastic musician whose music brings so much happiness to people throughout. Res asterisk 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 asterisk, Sinead O'Connor has passed away, said comedian Dar O'Brien. Just incredibly awful news all around. Stupid stuff. I hope she understood how much we loved her. Working with composer Bear McCreary, O'Connor just recorded a new theme for the historical television series Outlander. McCreary expressed his shock at O'Connor's passing on Twitter. She was the knowledgeable, foresighted, and humorous warrior poet I had anticipated. She and I had a lot of laughs. We were collaborating on brand new tunes that will never be finished, but now we've lost an icon. My pal is gone. Rip. O'Connor's voice, according to British singer Alison Moyet, cracks stone with force by increment. On December 8, 1966, O'Connor was born in Dublin from a difficult household. She stated that she began experiencing mental health problems later in life as a result of her mother physically and sexually abusing her when she was a young child. When she was 13 years old, she moved in with her father Jack after leaving her mother Marie when she was eight years old. After shoplifting incidents, she was sent to a correctional school at the age of 15. The famed Magdalene Laundry for Fallen Women that is now the Grianon Training Center in Dublin. O'Connor claimed that despite it no longer being an aggressive environment, being separated from her family pained her. But one of the nuns there recognized her musical aptitude and encouraged her to take lessons while also buying her a guitar. Through an advertisement in a Dublin music magazine, she connected with Colm Farrelly, and the two of them started the band Tonton Makut, which helped to launch O'Connor's career as a young musician. Her mother was killed the same year after losing control of her vehicle on an icy road and colliding with a bus. In 1987, O'Connor released The Lion and the Cobra, her critically praised debut album, following her signing with Ensign Records. She rose to fame, however, with the release of her second album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got in 1990. The album, which featured her breakout single Nothing Compares to You, sold more than 7 million copies. The images of O'Connor in the song's music video are those that many fans will associate with her most. Her clean voice, pale face, shaved head, 
and tears streaming down her cheek. When singing the ballad, the singer claimed she always had her mother Marie in mind. She also came up with the songs You Made Me the Thief of Your Heart, Drink Before the War, and This is the Day for the Daniel Day-Lewis movie in the name of the father. Throughout her career, she recorded ten studio albums, with nothing compares to you being awarded the top global hit by the Billboard Music Awards in 1990. She garnered three Grammy nominations for Nothing Compares to You, and Rolling Stone named her Artist of the Year in 1991. She demonstrated that a recording artist might refuse to compromise and yet be heard by millions of listeners who were looking for music with substance, according to the magazine. She was long noted for her shaven head, as well as for her outspoken opinions on feminism, war, sex, and religion. In certain circles, she will also be remembered for tearing up a picture of Pope John Paul II while appearing on Saturday Night Live. Brazen and outspoken, O'Connor challenged popular culture's long-held ideals of femininity and sexuality in the early 1990s with her shapeless clothes, shaved head, and distressed countenance. Everyone desires a pop star, as she stated in her biography Rememberings from the year 2021. But I sing in a protest band. Just some things I needed to get off my chest. I wasn't interested in fame. Her turbulent domestic life, political and cultural opinions, and music were frequently overshadowed. She and Frank Sinatra got into a fight when she forbade the playing of the Star Spangled Banner at one of her performances and claimed that Prince had threatened to hurt her. She proclaimed her support for the Irish Republican Army in 1989, a claim she later withdrew. She missed the Grammy Awards at about the same time because she felt it was overly commercialised. O'Connor, who had long criticised the Catholic Church for alleged sexual abuse, gained notoriety in 1992 when, while performing live on NBC's Saturday Night Live, she tore up a picture of Pope John Paul II and referred to the institution as the enemy. When O'Connor joined the Latin Tridentine Church in 1999, a sect that was not recognised by the mainstream Catholic Church, she raised controversy in Ireland. She advocated for a thorough inquiry into the scope of the church's complicity in covering up priestly child abuse for many years. Pope Benedict Texvi I apologised to Ireland in 2010 to atone for decades of abuse. O'Connor criticised the apology as being insufficient and urged Catholics to abstain from Mass until a thorough inquiry into the Vatican's participation was conducted. By 2018, this issue had gained international attention. People pretended that I didn't have faith in God. That is definitely not the case. She stated in the Washington Post in 2010. If the Vatican offered sincere reconciliation, I would be the first at the church door because I am Catholic by birth and culture. Even though O'Connor continued to go by Sinead O'Connor in her professional life, she revealed in 2018 that she had converted to Islam and would be taking the name Juhada Devit. O'Connor made her musical retirement official in 2003, but she kept on recording. I'm not bossy, 
I'm the Boss, her most recent album, was published in 2014. She had four husbands and four children throughout the course of her life. Jake with her first husband John Reynolds. Roy's in with John Waters. Shane, who passed away last year. And Yeshua Bonaudio with Frank Bonaudio. O'Connor's three kids are left behind.